Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis and its management and the nursing responsibilities. Well, before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. What is respiratory acidosis? It is a clinical disorder in which the hydrogen ion concentration that is pH is less than 7.35 and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that is PaCO2 is greater than 45 mmHg. Bicarbonate is slightly elevated or maybe normal. If you look at this example, pH level is 7.30 that is below the normal range. As we all know, the normal level of pH is between 7.35 and 7.45. If you look at the level of PaCO2, it is 48 that is more than the normal level. The normal level of PaCO2 lies between 35 and 45 mm Hg. When we compare both the given values of pH and PaCO2 acid along with acid, we can come to a conclusion that it is a respiratory acidosis. How is respiratory acidosis caused? It is caused by an accumulation of carbon dioxide through the production of carbonic acid. Any condition that results in hypoventilation can cause respiratory acidosis by preventing the exhalation of carbon dioxide. What do we mean by hypoventilation? Hypoventilation is breathing that is too shallow or too slow to meet the needs of the body. If a person hypoventilates, the body's carbon dioxide level raises and this causes a buildup of acid. Possible causes of hypoventilation includes neuromuscular disease that causes weakening of the muscle that controls breathing and chest wall deformities and medications like sedatives, opioids, etc. Most cases of respiratory acidosis are due to decreased alveolar ventilation. Alveolar ventilation is defined as the volume of air entering and leaving the alveoli per minute. For a better understanding, here is a basic concept how pCO2 raises. First is, if carbon dioxide production raises and alveolar ventilation is constant, then arterial pCO2 raises. If carbon dioxide production is constant and alveolar ventilation fails, pCO2 raises. Alveolar ventilation is calculated by subtracting dead space ventilation from total minute ventilation. Now, let's look what is acute and chronic respiratory acidosis. Acute respiratory acidosis occurs quickly because carbon dioxide levels may build up very quickly. Hence, it is a medical emergency and life-threatening as well. Common causes of acute respiratory acidosis include Impaired respiratory drive, which may be due to toxins, central nervous system disease, and airflow obstructions, which may be due to asthma, COPD, pulmonary disease, sleep apnea, airway edema. Chronic respiratory acidosis develops over time. Body tries to adapt the increased acidity. For example, the kidneys produce more bicarbonate to help maintain the balance. Now, Let's look into the compensation occurring during respiratory acidosis. Renal compensation of respiratory acidosis is by increased urinary excretion of hydrogen ions and reabsorption of bicarbonates. This process occurs over several days. Slowly, pH reaches normal values but bicarbonate levels remain increased. When we look at this example, pH is 7.35. PCO2 is 48 and bicarbonate is 28. pH 7.35 is somewhere across the normal value and hence it is considered acidic. PCO2 is 48 which is above the normal level and it is considered acidic. Acid along with acid explains that it is a respiratory acidosis. Because pH is almost reached the normal level, it is called a fully compensated respiratory acidosis. In a fully compensated respiratory acidosis, blood pH is normal where it has corrected the imbalance. Here, the secondary response is by increasing the bicarbonate. Kidneys retain bicarbonate and excrete the 
hydrogen ions. Hence, bicarbonate levels, which are usually normal in respiratory acidosis, remain increased as it compensates with the acid-base imbalance. Now, let's discuss about the causes of respiratory acidosis. For an easy understanding, it has been categorized under the mnemonic R. Hartig. And here it goes. First is respiratory disorders like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, asthma, pneumonia, atelectasis, bronchitis and bronchitis and acute respiratory disease syndrome. Next will be hypercapnia. Mechanical ventilation related hypercapnia if the rate of ventilation is inadequate and carbon dioxide is retained. Hypercapnia, also known as hypercarbia and CO2 retention, is a condition of abnormally elevated carbon dioxide levels in the blood. Next cause will be edema, that is pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is a condition caused by excess fluid in the lungs. This fluid collects in the numerous air sacs in the lungs, making it difficult to breathe. Next cause will be aspiration of foreign object. In most severe cases of foreign body aspiration, the inhaled object can cause choking and impaired breathing function. Next cause will be respiratory muscle impairment. First is muscular dystrophy, which is a group of muscle disease that results in increasing weakening and breakdown of skeletal muscles over time. Next is myasthenia gravis, which is a potentially life-threatening complication. Respiratory failure occurs due to weakness of respiratory muscles and mechanical ventilation is required. Respiratory failure may also develop due to weakness of the muscles that keep the airway open. Next condition is guillain bear syndrome, which is a problem with the nervous system. It can cause muscle weakness and the respiratory muscles fail to respond properly to the respiratory drive, which leads to respiratory acidosis. The next cause of respiratory acidosis is brain trauma. Excessive pressure on the respiratory center medulla oblongata depresses the respirations. Next cause is emboli that is pulmonary emboli. Pulmonary emboli can cause obstruction in a pulmonary artery resulting in airway obstruction and inadequate gas exchange. The next cause is drugs like narcotics and benzodiazepines which causes hypoventilation leading to respiratory acidosis. And now let's discuss about the signs and symptoms of respiratory acidosis system wise. Neurological symptoms include drowsiness, headache, confusion, anxiety, tremors, irritability and increased intracranial pressure. Respiratory signs and symptoms include increased respiratory effort with nasal flaring, decreased respiratory rate or hypoventilation, shortness of breath that is dyspnea or tachypnea. Integumentary symptoms include pallor and cyanosis. Neuromuscular signs and symptoms include seizures, muscle weakness and hyperreflexia. Cardiovascular symptoms include dysrhythmias related to hyperkalemia, hypotension, warm and flushed skin. Sudden increase in PaCO2 can lead to increased pulse and respiratory rate, increases blood pressure and mental cloudiness. Laboratory findings of respiratory acidosis include changes in serum electrolyte levels like sodium, potassium, bicarbonate and chloride. One or more of the electrolytes will be increased or decreased in patients with acid-based disorders such as respiratory acidosis. Next will be changes in ABG analysis, changes in X-ray in order to detect the injuries, change in ECG, pulmonary function test to measure breathing and how well the lungs are functioning. Now here comes the management of respiratory acidosis. Respiratory acidosis is managed by identifying and treating the underlying cause of respiratory acidosis. Some of the management measures include Administration of bronchodilators to help reduce bronchial spasm. Corticosteroids, that is inflammatory corticosteroids. Antibiotics are used for respiratory infections. Thrombolytics or anticoagulants are used for pulmonary emboli. Infusion of sodium bicarbonate. 
non-invasive positive pressure ventilation that is CPAP or BiPAP. Mechanical ventilation used appropriately may improve pulmonary ventilation. Nursing management of respiratory acidosis include checking the vital signs, monitoring heart rate, rhythm, and ECG tracing, checking the mental status or neurologic status, maintaining semi Fowler's position, endotracheal functioning as indicated, monitoring electrolyte levels, monitoring intake output, ABG analysis, observing for the signs of respiratory distress like restlessness, anxiety, confusion, and tachycardia. The main nursing diagnosis for respiratory acidosis include impaired gas exchange related to ventilation perfusion imbalance evidenced by dyspnea with exertion, tachypnea, irritability, tachycardia, hypoxia, hypercapnia. Let's move on to respiratory alkalosis and the responsibilities of nurse. What is respiratory alkalosis? It is a clinical disorder in which the pH is more than 7.45 and the PaCO2 level is lesser than 35 mm Hg. Here is an example showing respiratory alkalosis. pH level is above the normal range that is 7.48 and PaCO2 level is below the normal range that is 32. Respiratory alkalosis or primary hypocapnia is a condition marked by a low level of carbon dioxide in the blood due to breathing excessively. Any condition that results in hyperventilation can result in respiratory alkalosis. It involves an increase in the respiratory rate and or, or the volume, that is hyperventilation. Most cases of respiratory acidosis are due to increased alveolar ventilation, all of which are just the opposite of happenings in the respiratory acidosis. Now, the difference between acute and chronic respiratory alkalosis. Differentiation is based on the degree of metabolic compensation. Excess bicarbonate is buffered by extracellular hydrogen ion within minutes. but more significant compensation occurs over 2 to 3 days as the kidneys decrease the hydrogen ion excretion. Let's discuss about the causes of respiratory alveolosis. It is categorized into two pulmonary and central cause. Pulmonary causes include pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, pulmonary edema, and asthma. Central causes include head injury, stroke, hyperventilation syndrome, and drugs like progesterone, methylxanthine, salicylate, catecholamines, and nicotine. Other causes may include fever, pregnancy, high altitude, overventilation by mechanical ventilators, and pain. Now, let's discuss about the signs and symptoms of respiratory alkalosis system-wise. Neurological symptoms include lethargy, inability to concentrate, confusion, loss of consciousness, and lightheadedness. Neuromuscular symptoms include paresthesias that is numbness and tingling, seizure, hyperreflexia, muscle twitching, tetani. A positive Chostek sign is seen in alkalosis due to hypocalcemia. As we all know, Chostek sign is short contractions that is twitching of the facial muscles elicited by tapping the facial nerve below and in front of the ear that is approximately 2 cm ventral to the ear lobe. Cardiovascular symptoms include tachycardia, ventricular and atrial dysrhythmias and palpitations. Respiratory symptoms include shortness of breath that is dyspnea or tachypnea. Laboratory findings indicating alkalosis include changes in serum electrolyte levels that is potassium and calcium which is lower than the normal range, ABG analysis, chest x-ray changes to detect injuries, ECG changes, pulmonary function tests to measure breathing and how well the lungs are functioning. Management of respiratory alkalosis is based on identifying and treating the underlying cause of the alkalosis. Management measures include assist with breathing techniques that is encouraging voluntary holding of the breath if appropriate, provide use of a rebreathing mask, 
provide carbon dioxide breaths as prescribed, that is, rebreathing into a paper bag. Nursing management measures include monitoring vital signs, monitoring heart rate, rhythm, ECG tracing, checking the mental status or neurological status, maintaining semi fowler's position, monitoring electrolyte levels like potassium and calcium, ABG analysis, and assisting with breathing techniques. The essential nursing diagnosis for respiratory alkalosis include impaired gas exchange related to ventilation perfusion imbalance evidenced by dyspnea with exertion, irritability, tachypnea, and confusion. And this is all about respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis and the responsibilities of nurse. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.